Hello, hi everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us. Good afternoon. I'm your host, Sakina Aljunaid, and welcome to our webinar organized by Columbia Asia as part of its Health Transformation Program. So before we start, allow me to explain a little bit more about this program. Yeah? It has been three years since the Health Transformation Program was first launched. In fact, it won a Malaysia Health and Wellness Brand Award in 2019 under the wellness category. The objective of Columbia Asia's Health Transformation Program is to create a culture of health to make a difference and improve the health of the communities we serve. We believe that hospitals can create a culture of health at the workplace and in any community by offering effective health and wellness programs so individuals can make healthier choices. And also through its on-ground and digital, digital events and workshops, this program has benefited countless company employees in improving their health, fitness and well-being. Okay, so with that in mind, let's just welcome our Chief Medical Officer from Columbia Asia Hospital, Puchong, Dr. Tiago Rajagopal. Hi, Doctor. Good afternoon. How are you? Hi, hi. Fine. How are you? Fine, thanks. Thank you so much for Hello. making time for us. Uh, I understand that today's um, topic is about immunization. So you'll be addressing the topic of uh, various types of vaccination, correct? Yes, yes, that's right. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh, let me just introduce a, a small part of uh, the topic uh, to kickstart the show. Immunization is a key component of primary health care. It is a process that helps prepare our body's immune system to fight or prevent an infectious disease through vaccination. So let's learn how our body can protect us against a disease through vaccination and how we can protect the vulnerable people in our community by getting ourselves vaccinated. Okay, come, without wasting any more time, let's, um, let's let Dr. Tiago take it away. Let's take a look at the slides. Okay, so uh, Dr. Tiago, maybe you can first explain to us why is immunization so important? See okay. All right, okay. So uh, basically, uh, there's various reasons why immunization is important. Okay, first we need to uh, understand the importance of the vaccines that are available and, and why are these vaccines are important to protect ourselves and also to improve our immune system basically, right? So let us look at what this vaccine is all about. Okay, so next slide. What is vaccine? Well, yeah. Basic so, question to ask. Okay. All right. So in general, the vaccine actually use your body, uh, your body's natural defense to build resistance to infection. So the specific infections over here is more towards this communicable infection, uh, such as uh, arms, uh, rubella, measles, chickenpox, and so on. And this vaccine basically makes your immune system stronger. All right. Okay. And the vaccine actually contains only killed or weakened forms of germs, like virus okay. or bacteria. And okay. they do not cause the disease or put you at risk of its complications. Okay? And right. these vaccines yeah, are given through an injection. Some are given oral by mouth or spray into the nose. Yeah. Okay. Right. So a vaccine is not like a medication that you put into the body to fight. It actually is something that increases your body's natural defenses. Yes, exactly. So our body in nature, uh, they fight for any forms of uh, antigen or any mm. forms of uh, yes, that we get into yeah. contact. So same goes to vaccines. But the good thing about vaccine, it mm. improves your immune system to fight for right. the germ in future. Yes. I see. Okay, but this part about it being uh, that it contains killed or weakened forms of germs like viruses or bacteria. You see, okay, I just wanted yeah. to clarify. Well, this okay, is what? why we always say the vaccine is safe and mm. effective. Mm -hmm. Yes, good, that's very good. Okay, what goes into a vaccine, Dr. Tiaga? All right, okay, so we need to know the content of the vaccine, first of all. Mm. Okay, right, please. What goes into the vaccine? Okay, we're right. looking at the next slide. Yeah, here we go. Carry on, carry on. Okay, so basically, uh, this vaccine have uh, 
several uh, components. So the components, antigens, adjuvants, preservatives, and also stabilizers. Okay. okay. All these components are safe. Okay. All right. And then, uh, yes. So the scientists are studied well of these components before mm. they come up with this vaccine, basically. Okay. Uh, doctor, by the way, uh, have vaccines been around a long time? Ah uh, yes, oh, yes. That's just been developed during modern in modern day. Yes, since few decades before, and the, one of the earlier, the first one to uh, form vaccine was for smallpox. Actually, that was uh, quite long ago. Yeah. Okay. For for what type of disease? Uh, that, that is for this smallpox infection, basically. Oh, smallpox. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, smallpox. Due interruption. Okay, smallpox. So uh, as far back. 19 something yes uh if i'm not mistaken it's around 1960s somewhere there ah uh, okay right so kind of modern mm -hmm. day okay yeah sorry interrupted you uh, please go ahead okay. and else right. goes into a vaccine okay all right so move on uh probably we can talk about how this vaccine works mm, okay okay right so basically uh the vaccines uh train your body to yeah. uh, fight the germs faster and more effective, actually, okay. right? So yes, so these vaccines actually introduce harmless form of a germ into your body. Right. So yes, then your body produces antibodies, right? So these antibodies we call natural proteins yeah. in the immune system to fight for the disease. Okay. Right yeah so then what happened is that the immune system then remembers the germs and how to fight in future right so in future if such germ or infection get into contact your immune system can quickly destroy these germs and, and prevent you from becoming unwell or fall sick mm, mm, this is okay. how this vaccine works yeah that's good that's good all right all right okay so move on uh, we need to know the types of vaccines okay there are several types of vaccines and if some of you if aware we uh, divide this type of vaccine based on the uh, form of vaccine so which is we call inactivated form life attenuated form or yeah. vaccines subunit and so on mm -hmm. the common one is Flu vaccine or influenza vaccines, so which is we really always say inactivated form of vaccine. Okay, right? sorry. Now we are talking about what are the types of vaccine. Yes. Oh, I see. Uh, okay, maybe we can go to that slide. Okay, sure. Okay, just so the audience can uh, can relate to your uh, clarification. Okay, sure. So can go to the slides. What are the types yeah. of vaccine? What are the types of vaccine? Correct. We're looking at the flu vaccine, inactivated vaccine. Why is it called inactivated vaccine? Okay, inactivated vaccines are basically it, it, it is uh, what we call uh, some sort of like uh, dead dead vaccine or dead germ. All right. Okay. Okay. But yes, and in active form. So basically, it acts an antigen. So basically, all the vaccines actually act as antigen. So this is the basic concept that we need to know, right? It's just okay. that how it was formed. Yes, how it was formed. So these are the types of vaccines that we divide into these categories. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And as uh, you mentioned antigen. Antigen just now. What's the description mm -hmm. of antigen? What's an antigen? Okay, antigen is weakened or inactivated form of it could be a virus or bacteria that is okay. antigen mm -hmm. all right okay all right okay so as for uh, the current um uh, covid 19 vaccines so mm. yeah so those are the uh, yes. <laughs> so the latest latest uh technology uh whereby they use messenger RNA vaccines or they call mRNA vaccines for this COVID-19 okay. so especially for the Pfizer and Moderna group yeah so this is something new uh, that they discovered uh, lately to Correct. combat COVID-19 infection yes 
So apart from that, the other types of the group of vaccine we call viral vector vaccines is already there in the uh, in the market, and uh, this is usually to encounter or to combat Ebola infection actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, what about the rest of uh, the types of vaccine? Like what is live attenuated vaccines? Because these are vaccines that are quite familiar, especially if you have children, measles, mumps, yes. hepatitis. Yes. Mm. yes. So uh, the live attenuated vaccines are the MMR combined vaccines, for instance. So yeah. it's a combination yeah. of measles, mumps, rubella, right? Okay. So then rota virus, basically rota virus infection can cause also severe food poisoning, they come with uh, yes, diarrhea and so on. So it's very yeah. important at this moment for children especially, yes. Right, yeah, so but why is it called life attenuated? Okay, As life attenuated again, yes. Mean, yeah. Okay, so again, it's a, a, a weakened form of a virus or bacteria again, all right? Mm, I see, okay. yes. In a in a small amount, antigen introduced. Yes, basically it's okay. antigen. Just testing myself. <laughs> okay, carry on. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I think next we can look at our national immunization schedule, just for reference to understand that. Uh, so in our country, we have yes, we have a revised uh, recent um, national immunization schedule, uh, which yeah. was in. 2020, November 2020, all right? Mm -hmm. So, to get the national immunization schedule, it's okay. basically... I don't think, sorry, uh -huh. I don't think the viewers are looking at the same slides as what we are looking at because uh, we are still on what goes into a vaccine slide. Maybe we need to change this and look at the national immunization schedule slide. Yes, yes. Yes, here we are. Okay, all right. Okay, there you go. Sorry so, from that. here, yes. So you can see uh, this, uh, the recommended vaccine or compulsory mm -hmm. vaccine required mm -hmm. uh, for okay. for new uh, for those newborn up to yeah. year 15 year old actually. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So okay. uh, this immunization schedule basically uh, being adapted and mm -hmm. also available in both uh, public and private hospitals and clinics, right? So okay. it is available in website or you can mm. refer to the various centers and you can mm. go according to, to the schedule actually. So it's very important for our children to follow and to fulfill all the required vaccines as stated in this. Okay, okay. so this is based on uh through the years when there is a new disease. So this is when you have to uh, to adjust this, lah, this schedule. Exactly, exactly. If there's okay. uh, new vaccines available, yeah. and of course, yeah. of new of course this, yes. Of course, this okay. national schedule is under Ministry mm. of right? So it so is we follow, lah, of course, yeah. Yeah, the source is reliable. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and uh, why does it say certain diseases here, like for example, measles, it's only for Sabah, and then Japanese encephalitis is only for Sarawak? Okay, all right. So, if you, yes, if you look at the certain regions or certain states, with mm. certain things, as, as mm. we mentioned, measles and JE uh, for Sarawak yeah. and so on. All right, so mm. basically, outbreak in other states are being controlled so meaning that there's no cases being reported mm. or less so, cases being reported. so this is where we managed to uh, control this uh, outbreak in particular states and, yeah. and yeah. this yes these states still needed to control or to keep uh, this outbreak in control so this is where uh, the, the measles and uh, JE Japanese and encephalitis mm. get mm. in those two states. Yeah. I see. Okay. So vaccine is not given for the sake of giving vaccines, lah. It depends on whether they they are outbreaks or not. So a lot of details have been uh, considered. Yeah. Yes, and and also the risk and also the exposure. So mm. in and Sarawak, yes. So this is how they look at it. So the risk to expose to that particular virus very high yeah. so it's, yes it's better to have that 
vaccine to get protected. So this yeah. is how. And what we're looking at, uh, this immunization schedule is a compulsory schedule for every one of us. In uh, yes. yes, especially those who are born in Malaysia. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at the common side effects of vaccine. Would it, right. be, would it be different for different types of vaccine? Uh, okay. In general, the common side effects are same for all okay. the vaccines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it depends on the individual. Uh, right. And also, yes, and also depends on the age group as well for yeah. children, adults, mm -hmm. elderly, mm -hmm. and so on. Right? Yes. But what we need to know is what are the common side effects and uh, what we should expect when we get vaccinated, right? Okay. Okay. So if we look at the common side effects of the vaccines, which are these uh, listed over here, pain, swelling, or redness, where the injection was given, is one of the yeah. common effects. Uh, but okay. as for these symptoms, uh, we don't encourage you to apply ointment or rub mm -hmm. at the area and so on yeah so usually, yes usually a cold compress will do to ease the uh, pain or soreness at the injection site right mm -hmm. yeah yeah mild fever expected for some but yeah. for the time yes you may not having this mild fever right yeah same goes to the other symptoms like a chills feeling tired headache, mm -hmm. muscle and joint aches and so on. Okay. So these are very normal. Huh? These are uh, the common, like you said, like it's just a general uh, list of side effects. Yes. Yes. General okay. side effects. Okay. So some may encounter or may experience the symptoms, some may not. Yes. Have you heard of anyone who has had no side effects at all? Ataupun everybody who experiences vaccine, it's uh, <laughs> they, they have to uh, have uh, some side effects to know that the vaccine is working or not. Yes. So uh, we look at uh, in 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 giving these vaccines, we also look at this age group as I mentioned earlier. So for children, so we do advise parents. So most likely, uh, they will experience or might experience with the fever. So okay. be. Yeah. Man or, or when we give this vaccine or usually even the pediatrician uh, will give them a paracetamol yes just in case when they develop fever and so on then they can you know surf and then control the fever but yeah. most of the time it is expected in children especially as for adults most of the time we don't really expect uh, much of I mean of these symptoms except for pain and swelling or redness at the injection site. Uh, okay. Some of them, they do uh, just uh, um, uh, inform us that they have some pain and swelling, but not, yeah. not to the extent that it cause infection, yes. Okay, so these are expected symptoms. But would there be uh, more serious symptoms and would that be something to worry about? In case uh, yes, symptoms? yes. So the... Uh, that, so you can see that on the next slide. All right. So the serious side effects. So if you can see here, it is same as uh, the other kind of uh, treatment or medication. So that what we call the severe allergy reaction or anaphylaxis. Okay. So some vaccines can give some allergic reaction, severe allergic reaction to particular mm -hmm. all right so these are the symptoms that we describe as serious side effects difficulty breathing or tonus of breath okay uh -huh. swelling of the face so basically at your both eyes lip swelling yes. and also throat so throat over here means that you may feel like a some um, a foreign body sensation at your throat or like a sore throat or kind of like an uneasy or feel like choking. Yes, those are the feelings. A fast heartbeat. So in, in, in medical term, we call palpitation. You know? yeah. Then the other common one is uticary rashes. So what we call this uh, allergic rashes that 
you can see all over your body probably and also comes so along with like itchiness, this? right? It, it looks exactly like the one in the yes. picture. So, <laughs> yes, yes, as, as we can see in the picture, yes. Something that, you know, you can, you can, or uh, some of them describe so, as well, hives. So it causes oh, itchiness. Hives. Yes, I see. So yes. hives and so eating area rash is the same. Hives, yes. Mm, same, yeah. same. Right. Mm. Develop, yes. You can see it all over the body most of the time. Right? Mm -hmm. And some may feel some dizziness and weakness of this right. reaction. Mm. Yeah. So, so what happens the if most uh, important, anybody encounters this? Yes. Yeah. So the most important part uh as as a as a as a patient or or for the family members what they need to uh, take is that if someone or if the children develop such symptoms they need yeah. to seek immediate treatment at nearest hospital or clinic yes so shouldn't delay shouldn't delay okay that's more important and most of the time um the doctor the consultant will advise yeah the patient or the parents before giving the yeah. vaccines to look for mm -hmm. these symptoms all right and next we have an immunization schedule also what's the difference between this this and the one that we saw earlier okay so on the next slide okay basically we want to look at who require vaccines basically ah, okay. all right let's do this first okay right so over here of course we know that we have we also discussed about that infants or young children are yes. the important uh, age group people who require vaccines so apart from that we also need to know that there are other group of people who require vaccines throughout their life yes. so yes so those are these elderly above 60 year old healthcare workers mm. travelers pregnant women yeah. even no compromised persons such as uh, cancer patients, mm. HIV carriers, yeah. and also, yes, those with um, health conditions such as diabetes, mm. asthma, heart conditions, and yeah. so on. Yeah. Okay. So, on the next slide, yes, we can see the type of vaccine required for these, these groups. Yeah. So, if you can share, so at the at the right side at the comment column there so if you look at there yeah so you can see the healthcare workers require hepatitis b adult vaccine so yes so we make it as a practice so whereby all the healthcare workers are being protected towards okay. that is b infection and make it as a mandatory so that all these healthcare workers receive hepatitis b vaccine all right all right so if you go down then for the hpv human papilloma virus for females okay this so, is cervical cancer exactly exactly so in our national immunization schedule they already included these in the school program It's a part of a school health program yes see? Right. but as for others you still can receive this protection or vaccines at mm -hmm. other uh, private hospitals or private clinics and so on yes. all right mm -hmm. you're still eligible to have okay then the other important is influenza vaccines for both adults and children children right so talk about this influenza vaccines of course we need to take the dose yearly or annually yeah right okay then if you go down further so the other one is we talk about this pneumococcal uh, mm -hmm. vaccine so whereby it is important to prevent pneumonia infection basically okay and not forget about this Hutch pilgrims, they require meningococcal vaccine, which is mandatory before they can travel. Yeah. yeah. So these are the part of, uh, yes, the vaccine. Okay, so 
requirement. This list, uh, this list includes those, uh, those that are compulsory and also non-compulsory. Yes, right? optional. Exactly. Optional depending on what they do. Uh, for example, this healthcare worker. Yes. And Depends yes. on the nature of work, yeah, nature of work yeah. and also the effect sectors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, right, that's great. Shall we see what's next? Yes. All right, so these are the important points or important part of the importance of the vaccines, basically. Yeah. All right. So why we need vaccines or why we need to have protection through vaccines right so mm -hmm. so if you look at it so the vaccinated person or child would not get an infectious disease through vaccination yeah all right okay so not only get themselves protected so it also prevents spread to other person so from person to person right, right? okay so this is where at the third point if you can see the disease spreading is also contained so meaning that we can prevent outbreaks so this is what we call herd immunity okay doctor if we have one question about herd immunity since uh, we are on this topic right now because uh mm -hmm. Encik ahmad fahmi is wondering what exactly is herd immu immunity so can you explain this part again you're saying that through right. vaccination disease spreading is right. also contained okay disease so meaning that yes so herd immunity uh, mm -hmm. is achievable if all of us or the people in the community get vaccinated. So meaning yeah. that they, they not only protect themselves, they also protect others by not spread the infection. So they don't, yes, when, when you become vaccinated, you don't get infected. So the chances for you to spread the disease is very low. So this is what we call herd immunity. Yes. So basically, when you get vaccinated in a community, you create a herd immunity. Yes. I see. So collective lah, everyone is. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So we all get vaccinated, right? All right. So then the other thing is about uh, the importance of the vaccine is that. So when we get one or more dose of vaccine, yeah. so we yeah. get protected, yes, again, the disease over the years, right? Okay. okay. So this is why the vaccines we say effective in prevent the infection disease, infectious disease. Yeah. Okay. So then the other thing about this vaccine is, of course, we talk about the prevention of the disease through vaccine. Yeah. So basically, we prevent infection through these vaccines. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I say that, uh, some vaccines you can you you have to only do it once, while there are other vaccines that you've got to you know take booster shots, follow up shots and whatnot. Yes. Yes. Exactly. So it, it based on the studies. It's based on the study. So some dose just require once. And it, uh, we say it is good enough to create the antibody for protection. As for some, you need to get the booster dose or subsequent yes. dose. Yes, to make your immune system more stronger, much stronger. So it is it is important to follow if a vaccine requires subsequent doses. For instance, hepatitis B and the HPV vaccine. Yeah, yes. yeah. So those two vaccines require uh, three doses, three doses, and, and yes, three doses, and must follow according to the uh, days, dates, according to the duration that they've given. Yeah. Okay, doctor. For uh, the ones that you need to take only once in your life. Uh, what, what are the ones? What are those types about? All right. BCG, so, for example, yes. yes. So, BG, yes, of course, yes. So, uh, once we receive on the day one of life, so right. after, yes, we, we no longer take this BCG vaccine, right? Mm. For instance, one time only, mm, okay. yes. 
So, so as for hepatitis B, so of course it's given since birth also on day one. Right. If you yeah. know that yes, our latest uh, immunization schedule. However, the antibody may deplete over the time. Mm. So, so this is fair for hepatitis B. You can have this blood test to look yeah. into the surface antibody level. And yeah. if it's low or if it's none, then you need to go for hepatitis B vaccine for three doses. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's also a question here regarding um, natural immunity versus vaccines because uh, I think there's also there's also a seemingly um, an assumption. Uh, Right, that, right. that because you have natural immunity, therefore, why do you just rely on your your own immunity rather than taking something that is external? So, what is your yes. explanation about this? All right. Okay. So we can look into next slides. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so basically, uh, the difference of why we need vaccines compared to uh, natural immunity. Why yes. you to take the chance? Of having natural immunity by getting this infection, right? right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so basically, uh, we can describe as the price paid for the price paid for the immunity. All right. Okay. So, uh, the undesirable events, especially like for mm -hmm. instance, if you look at the uh, second uh, point, intellectual disability from this. Right. Hemophilus influenza infection, mm -hmm. all right, or pneumonia, chest infection from pneumococcus, birth defects from rubella infection, and the other one, which is quite common, we can see from hepatitis B infection is the liver cancer, mm -hmm. right, and uh, the measles can cause death, especially in children. So th these are the risk factors, or these yeah. are the that yes, you may face if you not uh, getting these vaccines and depending on natural immunity. Okay, so saying that we do have natural immunity, but we need help as well, uh, especially for exactly. From exactly, exactly. Why would you like to take the chance when yeah. when this something that can help to get yourself protected and can make your system stronger this is the role of the vaccine basically so okay. yes so at the same time uh, to support this yes the dose of uh, I mean the exposure and yeah. also the time of exposure also matters right so when we talk about this dose so when you naturally expose to some sort of like germ for instance any Kind of a virus or bacteria, yeah. though the germs or the dose is larger. So these scientists know uh, knows about knows about this uh, uh, the 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 infection very well. So whereby yeah. they design this vaccine, yes. So they make make it as a, the smallest amount that yes. that needed and to generate this protection in our immune system. So basically can create a proper immune response basically to protect ourselves, right? Okay, so and, as for the dose. Yeah, and talk about time of exposure, of course, we won't know when we get exposed to these germs, but through vaccination, we can control this. So meaning that any point of time when you get exposed, we are ready our immune system is ready to combat. Yes, right? So this is why the vaccines actually protect us <clears throat> by introducing, yes, the less or least quantity of the germ or antigen, and yeah. also, yes, they control the scheduling, the exposure. Okay, okay. Now let's talk about um, how we can get vaccines from where? Okay, all right. So of course, it's uh, simple as it is. Uh, you can get from uh, 
any uh, healthcare centers, basically uh, private hospitals, private clinics, okay. GP, mm. public hospitals, public clinics, right? Okay. But most important, yeah. if you are not sure or if you need further clarification on mm. things, you can always consult a doctor to get further details, right? Okay. okay. So that can clarify clear give you a clear picture what is vaccines all about and what are the important vaccines for your nature of work or right. for your risk yes okay uh, doctor you mentioned just now that we can get uh, vaccines at private hospitals uh, when we look at the list uh, the one that has uh, all the vaccines stated mm -hmm. so not all the vaccines are available at private hospitals yeah I mean, right. just we can uh, make that clear for everybody. Right, right. All right. Or, so, okay. <laughs> right. So, what are the types of what are the types of vaccine that are not available at okay. private hospitals because it's controlled yes. by? Uh -huh. uh, one of the the control vaccine would be this yellow fever. It's only available oh. in certain yes certain private hospitals. It's not available in most hospitals. And of course, yeah. yes, some vaccines, uh, uh, some vaccines availability depends on what we call the stock as well, right? Mm. Okay, but yes. So as for now, I, I, we are we are very sure this during this pandemic, of course, this COVID nineteen vaccination is right. ongoing throughout the country. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically, it is uh, given in most of the uh, public centers, basically. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, maybe in future, maybe we'll get chance to give this COVID nineteen vaccination and mm -hmm. probably get into the program as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's good because we just had to clarify uh, what. What we don't have yeah, at the moment so COVID, of course it's not something that we we have at the moment until uh, there are for the instructions by the ministry of course okay let's take a look at the questions that we have here beginning with the one by miss um, elaine Xiaosi. hi doctor will the immune system be weaker if you rely on vaccines all right okay so the immune system um there's there's no way the immune system get weaker with the vaccine but actually it the, the vaccine makes the immune system stronger more stronger yeah so there's no way our immune system get weaker uh with vaccine so probably uh there, there, there could be a misconception whereby antibiotics or or a medicine to treat this infection yeah might might be might weaken this immune system, but but not not these vaccines. Yes, vaccines are okay. supposed to boost the immune system. All right. Okay. Here's another one by Miss Espian. Hi, Doctor. May I know what ways can improve the immune system? All right. Okay. So we have talked about the importance of the vaccines. Okay, that is mm -hmm. one. So get yourself vaccinated. Healthy food and also exercise regular exercise is very important and also getting enough sleep so basically we also need to uh, get rid of stressful lifestyle yeah. so these are important points that we need to uh, consider to improve our immune system so our lifestyle also has a role to play when we're talking about um, the strength of our immunity yes exactly so oh. basically Yes. So we need we need uh, enough uh, rest, and then uh, what we call we need a, 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 a time break. You know. Uh, yeah. Yes, a time. Yes. So we need a proper rest, or mm. we should get uh, get a, yeah. enough uh, sleep. Yes. So, so yeah. at least about yeah. six to eight hours a day is very important. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yes. So it's not just about eating and drinking. It's not about what you consume. Not only about that, it's also about how you live your life. Okay, great. Exactly. Okay, exactly. Great. okay uh, here's one from Miss Yi. I had hepatitis B vaccine many years ago. Did my health screening lately? They said I need a booster. How frequent do we need to check if we need a booster? 
All right. Okay. So once you have uh, done the screening for this uh, Hep B, so basically, as I mentioned earlier, we look at the antibody level, surface antibody level. All right. So if you need a booster with one uh, injection, uh, it is good enough to uh, boost enough antibody, but for some, it wouldn't boost enough. So the, for, the, for the next round, probably you can give time about a year to check again for the level. So yes, so if, if the level is sufficient uh, enough, then you, you may just continue monitoring for following years, for subsequent years. But if the level is still low, then you may require another booster dose. Okay. I hope that answers your question, Miss Yi. Thank you for asking. Okay, here's another one by Miss Elena Tan. Hi, Doctor. What would be your advice on the kind of food that we should take to boost our immune system? Oh, we just spoke about this. Okay, but uh, <laughs> you can mention uh, what are the particular types of food? Yeah. All right. Okay. I think uh, we should consider uh, when we talk about healthy food. Of course, it comes along uh, with this. Um, food rich with vitamins, uh, minerals, and so on. So okay. obviously we need to include vegetables, you know, vegetables and fruits in our, yes, in our diet, as well as drink enough water, plenty of water. Yes, at least three to four liters a day is very important. So yeah. water and vegetables. And fruits. Among other things, lah. Yeah, okay, all right. Yes, all right. Thank you, Ms. Elena, for asking that. Um, another one by uh, from Miss Elaine Zelsi. Okay, a second question. Hi, doctor. What is the advice for Malaysians who have a previous history of cancer, be it those after completing their treatment and those who are in remission? All right. Okay. So for cancer patients, uh, especially those who uh, completed treatment or undergoing treatment or in um, uh, therapy such as chemotherapy and so on. Uh, yeah. The best person is the uh, uh, doctor, basically oncologist or physicians. Okay, yeah. get them involved, consult with them uh, if needed to go for vaccines and if require vaccines, what are the vaccines required and what is the suitable time to go for these vaccines. They know better, yes, yeah. and depends on the patient's conditions as well. Yeah, there will be a, a better way to find out, yes. Thank so you. always get the doctor involved before you decide mm -hmm. to take vaccines or take vaccines, yes. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Tiago. Um, okay, we don't have any more questions. Uh, I suppose we can start wrapping up now. Uh, just a few personal questions, I mean, personal right. in terms of your professional existence like, at Columbia H Hospital, Pucho. How long have you been with the hospital, doctor? Oh, uh, it's going to be about nine years with Columbia wow. Pucho. Nine years already. Wow. Um, yes. and where were you practicing? Uh, before this, I was uh, attached to government hospital. Basically, I was uh, in HKL, KL, GH. I see. And do you actually live in Pucho where you practice now? Uh, I'm in uh, Columbia, attached to Columbia Puchong and I'm currently in Puchong as well. Okay, that's very convenient for you. And you've always wanted to become a, a health practitioner? Uh, yes, uh, it is one of my, I mean, it, it, it was my... Cita-cita. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Oh, so oh, small. Yes. Wow, lucky. Because not it's everybody gets to, gets to be what they uh, want. Not by force. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. Good to know. Okay, doctor. So thank you so much um, for all your advice, your explanation today. I'm sure it has been very, very helpful for everyone out there. So thanks everyone for joining us today. This was our uh, webinar by Chief Medical Officer of uh, Columbia Asia Hospital, Puchong, Dr. Tiago Rajagopal. Okay, thank you, doctor, and thanks everyone. Okay, thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Thank you.